Hello everyone and welcome to another Tech Tip Tuesday. In today's Tech Tip, we'll be covering the mesh editing capabilities available in the Common Spec software that you can use to further process any sort of mesh data you have. So we've already imported in this mesh file. Um, it's coming from one of the GOM scanners, which we used to scan this part. And we're going to highlight some of the commonly used mesh editing tools in the mesh editing workspace to go ahead and address some areas of concern. So the first thing we're going to use is this close holes option to close, let's say, for example, these two holes here. All I have to do is control and click near the hole. And the software does a great job of filling in the hole with the correct geometry. I select OK. Let's move on over to this one. And before I do that, let's just turn on the mesh structure so we can see some of the different results we can get by changing the filling result. So if I select this one, control click, Normal does a great job of filling in that hole for me and uses the surrounding mesh data in order to get a good representation of the filling method. Let's say I want to change it to rough. You see now that I've changed it to rough, we have a very low mesh density, so high triangles, as well as a sort of jagged edge, which may not be ideal. If we take a look at very smooth on the other hand, it's done a great job of smoothing out with a curve along that edge. However, that may not be the result that we want in this case to maintain that sharp edge. So we can go ahead with the normal option. So the next mesh editing tool that we can take a look at is Smooth Mesh, which we're going to use to eliminate some of the milling contours that were picked up by the scanner. So if I go ahead and use my plane selection method to simply grab the plane here upon which those outlines rest, that way I can eliminate the software from using any other geometries to be included in this portion. So let's go ahead and select the smooth mesh. I get a little preview window that I can use to essentially determine what the result is based on the selection options. If I go to a very large filter radius, you see it's did a great job of smoothing that outline out. Small, on the other hand, doesn't work quite as well, so you may have to adjust this based on what you are looking for. And the same thing goes for detail sharpness. In this case, it doesn't look like it has much of an effect at all. I can also adjust surface tolerance, which is essentially the value that the software uses in terms of its limit on the deviation it can have from the original data set. So right now, it's allowed to have a maximum change of 0.1 millimeters from the original. However, I lower this to let's say 0.01. The outline is still a little bit more pronounced. If I can change it to zero, no change at all because I allowed zero deviations to occur. So let's go with 0.1, that looks good. And if I press apply, it's gonna apply it for the entire plane selection. And that looks good. So the last mesh editing tool we're going to highlight for today's tech tip is the thin mesh feature, which is very useful when you are looking to export this mesh file out into a 3D CAD software for further processing. The reason for that is because mesh files, typically ones that come from scanners like the GOM scanners, are made up of thousands and thousands, sometimes millions of points. As you can see here with by the mesh structure, this contributes to a very high file size and also makes it cumbersome to work with when um, using it in a 3D CAD software that's not optimized for high density mesh files. As you can see here, the number of points for this part alone is over 700,000 points. So because we don't need to have such high mesh density all around the part, we're just simply going to use the thin mesh option to reduce that. So I'm first going to select the entire mesh file using select all, then go into my thin mesh option. And I can choose to thin it either using surface tolerance, which once again is the maximum deviation that I'll allow the software to use, or simply give a discrete number of points. Remember we had over 700,000 points. Let's tr see what happens if we go to 50,000. Click apply and now the software gives us a much less dense result. However, it still preserved those high detail regions like curves, fillets, and edges with as much of a mesh density it can use with our 50,000 limit. 
and the rest of the regions, especially the flat plains and such, they have been significantly reduced in terms of its mesh density. So now this will be much better to work with if I, let's say, bring it into SolidWorks for further processing. One main point of advice though, when you are looking to use mesh editing tools, is that you would always want to avoid using it in areas that you're gonna be interested in for measurement purposes. This is because using mesh editing tools for those areas that you wanna measure is gonna give you a different result when applying these tools. So if you want to have a reliable result and not a different result because of the mesh editing that was applied, I would always avoid using these tools in those critical areas. So that's it for today's Tech Tip Tuesday, and we'll see you in the next one.